Horses have been a part of the human experience for thousands of years. The domestication of this animal played a pivotal role in the history and development of humanity. They have served us on the farm as well as on the battleground. They have plowed, hauled produce, and raced our mail across the country. Before mechanization swept the land, horsepower helped us produce and grow as a nation. Horses have captured our hearts and imaginations. What do we feel when we stand next to a horse or see them running through an early morning mist? We are moved by their power, their strength, and endurance. Their beauty touches our hearts as we are overwhelmed by their capacity to connect with us on a one-to-one -one basis. Perhaps our fascination with this animal may lie in the thought that they are what we wish to be. Horses are beauty without effort. They have heart, they have intelligence, and they have spirit. Horses follow where we lead and try within their ability to do what we ask of them. This special horse-human connection comes from relationship, a relationship that takes both time and effort. Our goal here at Horsin' Around is to explore the horse-human connection. Our hope is to share information and experience that benefits both horse and rider. We also want to introduce those of you who are not presently owned by a horse to this wonderful animal and the satisfaction in owning a horse. There's much to explore, so stay with us as we take you horsing around. First up today, the American Quarter Horse, or as it is often called, the world's most versatile horse. This compact muscular horse is ideally suited for explosive speed and quarter mile stretches and has been clocked at speeds of 55 miles per hour. English settlers who first raced this breed for sport called it the Quarter Pather and raced it down streets and lanes. In the early 1600s, the American Quarter Horse was first bred in Virginia and along the eastern seaboard. A cross of Arab, Barb, Turkish Stallions, and English mares produced the foundation stock for this all-American breed. Because of its strength, speed, and intelligence, the Quarter Horse quickly became a staple on early American farms. As America developed and went west, they took the Quarter Horse with them. Used for herding cattle, pulling harness, and distance travel, the Quarter Horse developed a reputation for versatility and a calm disposition, a reputation it maintains today. The Quarter Horse has a short, broad head with a fairly long and flexible neck. The deep shoulder and short back of this breed make it ideally suited for holding the saddle in place. Although the Quarter Horse has been predominantly chestnut or sorrel, the American Quarter Horse Association recognizes 13 other colors. This breed stands 14 to 16 hands high. At home in the show ring, as well as on the trail, the Quarter Horse is one of the most popular horses in the world today. Jesse Lovell has been breeding, working, and showing Quarter Horses for over 30 years. He spoke with us about this truly American horse. Mr. Lovell, thank you so much for having us this morning. Well, thank what a you. beautiful day. Beautiful horses you have here. Thank Tell you. me, what kind of horses are these? Well, these are quarter horses. They're uh, primarily they're working cow horse type, and then we've got some running bred horses in here too. Okay. Tell me a little bit about what you mean by running bred horses. Well, they're quarter mile racing horses, okay. 350 yard dash, or barrel racing horses. Oh, and okay. then the, the uh, mares, we've got here, a lot of those are foundation bred quarter horses going back to the old foundation type quarter horse. Right. And we've got some gun smoke bred horses and some uh, two-eyed jack and Beduino <laughs> and runaway winner. And wow, some, wow, you've got some, some heavy duty bloodlines there. Yes, we do, yeah, got some good yeah. bloodlines. How long have you been in the quarter horse uh, breeding area? I've been breeding quarter horses for about 35 years. Okay. Had quarter horses most all my life. Okay. But been breeding registered horses for that long. Yeah, yeah. Um, what if, if an individual had never owned a horse before and they wanted to go out and buy one? Would would a quarter horse be a good type of animal for someone who didn't have any experience with horses at all? Well, I think so. Uh, okay. When I began to look for a horse 
mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. I didn't have a choice as a kid. It just yeah. happened to be a quarter horse. Yeah. I've owned about every kind of horse. I've oh. walked from horses, Arabians, everything. Right, right. But I liked a quarter horse because of the versatility. It'll make a, a work horse, wagon, buggy, running, uh -huh. uh, cow working horses, reining, pleasure. Okay. They're just a real versatile horse. Right, right. Well, tell me a little bit about the personality. Well, I find quarter horses to be like a lot of them. You've got real high strung horses in some of them. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. Basically, I think quarter horses are friendly. Uh, docile, yeah, easy yeah. to get along with. Okay, no, we're not, we're, you're not t talking with a high-strung horse that's, that's no. gonna... No, there are some control explosions, <laughs> but most of the, the time a working cow horse can be a control explosion one minute and drop their head down and walk off like a easy pleasure horse the, the next, next minute. minute. So it, a lot of it depends on how they're trained? A lot of the breeding, a lot of just the personality. Just personality in the horse. Okay. Is there anything else that you want to share with us about your horses? I know that you love this animal, uh, and, and, and we just want to give you an opportunity to, to, to jump in there and say whatever you, what you think you, people need to know about the quarter horse. Well, the quarter horse is a versatile breed. Uh, one of the most exciting shows that I've ever seen was at the Congress in the versatility class where they did five different events. Yeah. From barrel racing to dropping her head down like a pleasure horse, uh -huh, and sure uh -huh. enough a pleasure horse. We've enjoyed them from the standpoint of working cattle. Yeah. Uh, That's son, how you started? That's what yeah, you started using I, I, the quarter horses? I got the quarter horses to work cattle with. Uh, okay. And then we began to hear about competitions and we began to get a little better horses. And uh -huh. so we've tried to breed to have a good cutting horse, working cow horse. And now then, we're getting into the running horse business some. Uh, my, That's what you described uh, a few yeah, minutes Yeah, my oldest ago. son's yeah. a partner with me on these horses. And he wants to get into the racing business. So. Quarter horses fit a, a broad spectrum of activities. Uh, my youngest son said, well, Dad, it's like a walking horse. It's probably a Cadillac, and a quarter horse is a Corvette. And he said, you're more of a Corvette guy <laughs> Corvette kind of than guy, a Cadillac huh? guy. <laughs> oh, well, I have, to, I have to say I have to agree. They're beautiful animals, and I, and I really thank you allowing us to come out and, take, and, and talk with you and, and take film of them today. Well, thank you. Thank you. So, you have given it a lot of thought and you have fallen in love with the perfect horse. What's next? A horse is an investment, and you need to know what it's going to take to feed, house, and care for your horse. If you have your own barn, you will need a shovel, wheelbarrow, and broom. You will also need a pitchfork and bales of straw for bedding. Food for your horse will include hay, feed, and a salt or mineral block. The cost of these items vary by region. The cost of a bale of hay can range from $3 to $14 a bale. A 50 pound bag of feed will range from $5 to $8 a bag. How much feed or grain a horse requires each day depends on the activity level of the horse and whether or not he remains on the pasture at all times. If you intend to ride your horse, the tack you will need includes a saddle pad, saddle, bridle, and halter. You will want to purchase tack cleaning supplies and horse grooming supplies. This will include brushes, shampoos, and combs. You will need a bucket, a lead rope, stable blankets, and the very important first aid kit. If you board your horse, the cost of the feed may be included in the cost of boarding. It is important to know up front what your fees will be covering. You should also consider the cost of farrier and veterinarian care. The cost of these services will also vary by region. Well, these are your essentials. Everything you'll need to get started. Now, all you need is that perfect horse. But wait, before you buy, call your veterinarian. A pre-purchase exam by a qualified veterinarian can spot potential problems that might not be obvious to you. Dr. Cindy Johnson operates a mixed animal practice in Jamestown, Tennessee. She showed us some of the elements of her pre-purchase exam. Did you know? Horses live in herds for protection. A lone horse is more in danger of attack from predators. Dr. Cindy, I'm thinking about buying a horse for the first time. What should I do next? The most important step is to have your veterinarian do a pre-purchase exam. The next step is to make sure that you have a negative Coggins. Okay. 
All right, well, let's go take a look at the horse I'm interested in. Okay, let's do that. Now, what are you intending to do with Sally? What are your well, purposes for her? Well, um, I'm, I'm going to be riding her. Also, my daughter is going to be riding her. I was thinking about maybe some, some trail riding. Um, and also, because she's a mare, I was thinking about possibly breeding her, maybe having uh, some babies. Okay, okay, we'll take that into consideration on the examination then. Now, oh, the first no. place that we would start on our examination is I'd just like to just um, watch her and just okay. check out her general appearance and demeanor. Okay. And then the next part we would do is I would observe her in movement, walking her around, a jog, moving her in a tight circle. And then the, the last step that we would do is we will go from the nose to the back, checking each system individually in order to see if we find any problems there. Okay. Okay, All right. All so right. where we'll start right here is we'll start right at the nose. Okay. Now, things that I would look for in the nose is I'd look for any nasal discharge, any problems around there. I'll check at the mouth, I'll check her teeth, kind of see how old she is. I can age a horse by looking at their teeth. I see. I'll also check her teeth to see if they need to be what we call floated, which means they develop sharp edges on the outside or on the inside, mm -hmm. and those are causing problems with her eating. I'll check her face and I'll check for asymmetry on either side. Both sides should look just exactly like the other. Okay. You shouldn't see any problems there. I'll also check her eyes. I want to look for clear eyes. I want to look and see if there are any discharges coming from her eyes. I'll also, I'll look at her ears. I'll look down into the ears. I'll look on the outside of the ears. I'll look for external parasites or anything else that might be going on in there. I also want to feel just under the throat latch. Check those nodes that are there. There are lymph nodes in that area. I also want to feel all the way down her neck. Check any lymph nodes in this area. I'm also going to go and we'll look at her skin and see if she has any external parasites on her skin or any types of diseases or bacterial infections or anything like that that okay. might be going on on her skin. Okay. We would go on down and since you plan to possibly breed her a little bit later on, mm -hmm. one way that we would check a mare is that we would do a rectal palpation. And in that, we would feel the ovaries, we would feel the uterus, the uterine body, the uterine horns to mm -hmm. see if there were any so. abnormalities, so. So. anything that might cause her not to be a good candidate right, for, for birth. Yeah. Okay. 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 Then something else that we're going to check is we're going to go down her legs and we're going to check the, the legs, the symmetry of the legs. We're going to check for any swelling. We check every joint on the body. We okay. don't want any swelling in any joints. Okay. Uh, we'll also check the hooves, the surface of the hooves, the front of the hooves. We'll check the, we'll lift the feet up and we'll look under the hooves. And we'll do that all the way down the body. We'll do that on every leg. Okay. Now something else that we'll do is I'll also sculpt her with my stethoscope. Mm -hmm. I'll listen to the heart. I'll listen to the lungs, make sure those are clear with no obstructions, no congestion. Okay. I'll go that I'll do that on either side because okay. I want to listen to every part of the lungs. Okay. And I want to listen to the heart in all four chambers. Okay. Then what else I'll do is I'll listen to the bowels. And we divide when we listen to the abdomen, mm -hmm. we divide that into four separate quadrants. We listen here, and then we listen here, and we do the same on the other side. Okay. And we want to listen for normal bowel sounds mm -hmm. in those mm -hmm. areas. Mm -hmm. And Whoa, if we don't Sally. hear those normal Whoa, bowel Sally. sounds, Whoa, that Sally. could be a, a sign that there might be a problem. Okay. Okay. Come around, Sally. There we go. Come around here. There you go, girl. Good there girl. Go. Good girl. Whoa. So, Dr. Cindy, what did you find? Anything? How's she doing? Sally is a 12-year-old mare. We determined that from her teeth. She is in great physical condition. Okay, well, so. The only things that I found that might be a little bit abnormal were, if you'll notice in her back, she looks like she's got just a little bit of what we call a sway back. Okay. But I think that is probably because of her conformation. Mm -hmm. She's a very long-bodied horse. Right, right. And so that just looks that way. Right. And it could be from years of having had babies, too. I see. Another point that I noticed is that she needs to have a farrier look at her hooves. Okay. They need a trim. Okay. Otherwise, they look very healthy. They just need to be trimmed and a little, bit or, a little um, better upkeep okay. on them in okay. the future. Now, something else that I found that might be a problem, and it may not be, is I noticed a tiny little bump just above the surface of the hoof. Okay. That could be many things. Okay. One possibility, one possible diagnosis would be what we call phalangeal exostosis. Common name, ring bone. Ring bone. Oh. Ring bone can be, uh, it's Come just on. an area of inflamed bone okay. right on the surface of the bone. Okay. Sometimes it can cause a little bit of problems, a few limitations, if you will, Okay. to the work that she can do. I, I don't think it would be a problem for you, but it might be a problem if you plan to do 
very long, okay. hard endurance trail rides okay. or a very hard, rigorous showing schedule okay. or anything like that. Okay. Otherwise, I really don't think it would cause you a problem. problem. So, okay. But we would want to get it further diagnosed. We'd want to find out exactly what it was with things like radiographs, x-rays, ultrasound, see. and things like that. So it, it, you don't really think that it would be a problem at this point, but it could. It's a possibility that if it could I, limit I, her, her uh, use. usefulness. Sure. I see. Sure it could. And that's why we want to work it up a little bit further. Okay. So she's not really what we consider sway back, is this is just basically her build? Yes. Okay. Yes, just the way that okay. she's built. But otherwise, she seems to be in great in condition. In great shape. All right. You know, this is great. Uh, it's, it's much more feasible to me, and I think it's much better for me and Sally to know beforehand what... Uh, uh, what I need to know about her, and it's sure I think it would be uh, financially much better to, to know these things up front. Absolutely, so this, this because is great. it can be very costly and time consuming to take care of a healthy animal, much less that's, one that has health problems. Right. What do you think about that, Sally? Huh? What do you think about that? Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Chris Cox left America at a very young age. He moved with his family to an island off the coast of Australia where he grew up on a working cattle ranch. He also began a lifelong study of the behavior of horses. He has since returned to America and shares his experience and understanding of equine behavior with his students. We had a chance to speak with Chris at Equitana USA. Thank you, Mr. Cox, for being with us today. Thank you. Um, I just saw your presentation. It was fantastic. Could you tell me a little bit about your background and what led you to begin training horses and then begin training people? I was... Uh born in Kissimmee, Florida and ranched, my family owned a ranch down there and then uh, when I was a year old my dad went to Australia and purchased an island off the Cape York Peninsula of Australia yeah. and raised cattle on that island and horses and we used the, the Brumbies and the wild horses on that island to uh, for transportation and, and work cattle and stayed there for many years and just developed a relationship with a, a special horse uh, that was given to me there, a horse called Major. And, uh, it wasn't the horse you had with you in the ring today? No, no, no this was a horse when I was about five years old. Okay. Uh, three or four years old maybe. And uh, you know, that, that bond and that trust stayed with me and, and, and I searched for that for many years and became around good horsemen and yeah. traveled around and spent a lot of my on vacations uh, with good good horse trainers and horsemen. And, uh, I always had a dream to come back to the United States and uh, pursue a career in, in horse training. And when I was 18 years old, I, I had started enough colts and got enough money to come back to the United States. And so you live here now? I live here. I live in Texas. Oh, okay. Uh, I was contracted through the Bureau of Land Management uh, about 10 to 12 years ago doing clinics with recently captured Mustangs. And, from there, my, my clinics and, and demonstrations have just snowballed and, and uh, taken off. Taken off. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. What What do you feel are the most important things? I realize you do many things with with horses. What are the most important things you would like for, for participants in your clinics to walk away with from from a, a teaching method or a, or a concept that is most important? Well, horses have become very popular over the last few years, and I think that. Uh, Everybody, it's, 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 it is a big novelty, but a lot of the misconception when people go to work with horses, they don't really understand how a horse thinks and how a horse right. reacts. Right. And I think before you can ever achieve any results with a horse, you have to understand what kind of personality that horse has, how many, what kind of feelings it has, and you know, learn how to read it, just like people. And, you know, a marriage or a relationship with a friend does not ever start off unless you get to know them first and feel that. And I feel that that's very, very important with a horse. Um, have you seen change, uh, you've, you've been doing this for, for many years now, have you seen changes in attitudes uh, that people and trainers have towards horses in the last few years? Do you feel a, there's, a, there's a, well, a different philosophy in training? Yeah, I really do. It's, you know, of course the movie had a, had a positive effect on it, whether it was, uh, you know, it was, mm -hmm. there was some negativeness out of it, but there's a lot of positive, brought right. a lot of people out of the, right. out into the horse industry that didn't realize that this, there was this much communication between a horse and a person. And, right. uh, horses now are used for therapeutic riding, they're, they're used, I'm doing demonstrations, uh, helping psychologists understand their, you know, their students better. It's an unbelievable Fantastic. reaction, I think. And yeah. There's so much that we can learn from the horse. And I think the, the 
public has become aware of that, yeah. more so than just the regular training methods. Right, right. It's uh, more than just breaking a horse. Yes. And, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. There's a, it's very, very popular, and there is a, there is a big trend throughout the world. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's, it's, it's amazing. It really is. You know, a lot of people overlook how much of an impact the horse has had in the world. You know, there were four wars on, and land was settled, and you know we grew our vegetables with them, and, and right. mail was was ran on them, and you know it's they're a very, very important part of our world. And you know, that, you know, this is kind of something off, but but uh, from a Christian point of view, the good Lord's coming back on a horse. So they, 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 I think they hold a high place in, in, in and always have with with, with humanity. Fantastic. You Thank you so much for Thank your time. You. We enjoyed your we enjoyed your presentation. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, Brittany White, a 13-year-old barrel racer on her quarter horse Sadie. Did you know there are more registered quarter horses than any other breed in the United States? Miss Brittany, thank you for being with us today. You're welcome. Tell me a little bit, what are you going to be doing here today? Barrel racing. Barrel racing. How long have you been barrel racing? Since I was seven. What in the world made you want to get up on a horse and, and run down those barrels? A lot of my family has been barrel racing for a long time and my dad has really helped me a lot. Has he? What does it feel like to run down that arena and chase those barrels? It's really exciting. Tell me about this lady here. What's her name? Her name is Sadie. Sadie. How long has Sadie been barrel racing? Since she was two. Since she was two. So she's an old, old hand at this. Tell me a little bit about uh, how much time you spend with Sadie. I ride her about every other day and I go out in the barn after school. So you pretty much work with, you, you're with her about every day. Yeah. Do you have a hard time fitting in schoolwork and, and Sadie and all the things that else that go along with being your age? No, when I get home, I do my homework and then my dad is home by then and we go out in the barn and So you kind of work together. And, yeah. Sounds to me like this is a family affair. Yeah. If, uh, if someone else were, were wanting to get involved with horses, would you recommend that to them? Yeah. Are there other people your age? Yeah. What class are you competing in in there today? Uh, 40 barrels and 3D barrels and new 3D. And new 3Ds. Well, we hope to see you win. Thank you. Thanks, Brittany. You did a great job. Thanks. Bye-bye. Equitana USA has been bringing the North American horse community together since 1996. This annual gathering provides education, product information, and entertainment to horse enthusiasts, both novice and professional. The horse is coming into his own. This animal is beginning to receive the attention he has long deserved as a valuable player in our life and society. Millions of Americans are involved with horses. The love affair the American people have had with this animal is providing phenomenal growth in the equine industry, as evidenced by the 53,000 people who attended Equitana this year in Louisville, Kentucky. This celebration boasts visitors from every state in the U.S every Canadian province and 46 other countries. Americans are saddling up all over the country. These horse owners want education and information. Equitana USA provides a massive exposition of products under one roof. There are acres of exhibitors showcasing products for horse, rider, stable and home. This unique equine mall offers the shopper booth after booth of horse related merchandise. Can't make up your mind about a certain product? No problem. The manufacturer and product representatives are right there to give you the information you need, as well as offer demonstrations. Equitana features many educational venues. For four days, visitors can attend clinics and seminars, both in the classroom and in the demo ring. The industry's most respected clinicians offer educational presentations and demonstrations on all aspects of equine care, training, and riding. Visitors are given unique opportunities to sharpen their skill as competitor and consumer. During the evening, prepare to be dazzled. The main event features a theatrical extravaganza for people of all ages. Although the venue changes year to year, at any performance, you can expect to experience entertainment, music, and expert horsemanship. This production is followed by a free concert. Equitana USA is providing the American horse owner and enthusiast with what they want. Horses, horses, and more horses.
Hunger dominates the lives of horses. Besides the need to find food and water, their single strongest motivator is fear. Unfortunately, for many humans, they are also motivated by fear, or anxiety, or worry. Keep in mind, we have not been given a spirit of fear, but of power, and of love, and of a sound mind. When we exercise these gifts in our lives, we are empowered to protect the horses that come into our lives, as well as ourselves, our families, and the rest of creation. Keep in mind, when you are out there horsing around, be safe. Chris Cox, who it's about a thousand degrees here. I'm having a, oh God, some sort of a big critter, spider, something. And he shares his experiences and understanding of equine behavior. There you go. Horses follow where we lead and try within their, 